glad you could join in to watch our service today. This is the fourth Sunday after Easter, if you are watching it on Sunday. Our service today is page 38 out of the hymnal, and we'll begin with our first hymn, We All Believe in One True God. If you are using the hymnal, that's hymn number 270. We'll sing that hymn at this time. We continue on page 38. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins by the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. We'll continue with the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you have filled us with a new light of the Word who became flesh and lived among us. Let the light of our faith shine in all that we do. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with the scripture lessons that have been assigned for today. Our first lesson is from Psalm 32. This is a Psalm of David. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away, 
through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will, trans I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the wolves of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad. You righteous, sing, all you who are upright in heart. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson is recorded in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is the word of the Lord. Our verse of the day is from Psalm 98, verse 3. Alleluia! All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Alleluia! Our gospel lesson today is recorded in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. And our next hymn is hymn 385, Chief of Sinners, Though I Be. Oh, the 
chief of sinners though I be, Christ is all in all to me. All my wants to him are known, all my sorrows are his own. Safe with him in earthly strife, I await the The message today is based upon the Gospel of John, chapter 20, and I'm going to concentrate especially on verse 27. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear fellow redeemed, grace, mercy, and peace are yours this day from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sometimes the smallest things in life have the most profound influence on our lives. A few years back, I was at a pastor's conference in La Crosse, Wisconsin, at one of our Wells churches there. And whenever we have a pastor's conference, we always have a worship service to begin with. And as pastors, we always sit way in the front of church, in the first or second pews. And when you sit in the front of church, you can always see more and notice more than you do when you sit in the back of church. And so when I sat in the front of church on that particular uh, Monday morning, there was something that I noticed that stood out to me more than anything else. Do you know what it was? It was two little dots. And I can tell you, I saw those dots before. I've been in that church before. I worship in that church before. I saw those dots from a distance, but I never really felt a personal connection to those two little dots until that, sun, or that Monday. It was different on that day. I saw those two little dots as I sat there in the front pew, and it was like, it was like they were talking to me. It was like they had my name on them is like they were put there just for me on that particular day. Now what two little dots am I talking about? You probably already know. That church had an altar with a statue of Jesus on it with his hands spread out towards the congregation. And of course, in his hands, there was two little dots, which stood for the wounds that he suffered as he was pierced with nails. Those two little dots stood for real nails that pierced the real hands of a real Savior. And I have not forgotten those two little dots. I think about them often, in fact. I'm not alone. I'm sure Thomas thought about them very often, too, in his earthly life. You know the story. Uh, you've heard it many times. Let me just read it again from John chapter 20. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. For my message today, I want to talk to you about those two little dots. Just two very simple truths about them. Here's the first one. Those two little dots reveal our personal need for Jesus. Do you know what can and does easily happen in our lives as Christians? We forget how much we need Jesus. I know that that does not seem possible, but it is. 
In fact, I think it happens much more than we think about a lot of things. We take about 20,000 breaths every single day, and that adds up to about 6 to 8 million breaths of air every year. Just think about that. That's amazing. And yet, how often do we realize how much we need the air that we breathe? My friends, we forget how much we need those two little dots. We forget how much we need the precious blood that flowed from those dots. Peter says in his epistle, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. After Jesus rose from the dead, we know that Thomas did not believe in his resurrection. And of course, Jesus being God, he knew that. He didn't have to be there. He heard what Thomas said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. After Peter said that, or after Thomas said that, a week had passed. Just think about that. Think about the week, that week for Thomas. For a whole week, he lived in doubt. For a whole week, he persisted in his stubbornness. For a whole week, he heard what the other disciples were saying, that they had seen the Lord, but he refused to believe it. He had a whole week to think about what Jesus had promised the disciples, that he would rise, that he would die and rise from the dead. One has to wonder, if Thomas would have died during that week, would he have gone to heaven? Interesting question, isn't it? It was that serious. The Bible says, and if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. And that is where Thomas was. He did not believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. Of course, Jesus was patient with Thomas. You can praise the patience of Jesus. He's patient with us too. The Bible says that in regard to Judgment Day, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So Jesus waits one week, and then he comes to see Thomas. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then Jesus turned his attention directly to Thomas. He addressed Thomas personally. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Two little dots. Thomas saw those two little dots and it was then he realized how much he needed Jesus. Thomas personally needed those two little dots and the blood that flowed from them. All of his doubts, all of his stubbornness had to have been on his mind at that very moment. His sin, which needed forgiveness, had to be on his mind. Because his sin was on his mind, those two little dots were the most welcoming sight in the whole world. Because those two little dots meant that his sins were forgiven. My dear friends, listen to me carefully. If your own personal sin is never on your mind, then Jesus is never on your mind. Not that we have to dwell on our sin, not that we have to let our thoughts be consumed with our sin. That's not what I'm talking about. But the truth is this, only through the knowledge of our own personal sin, only through that knowledge will we ever realize our personal need for Jesus. Let me ask you, whose sin was on David's mind when David wrote Psalm 32, the psalm I read earlier? Whose sin was on his mind? 
David began that psalm by saying, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. Who was the one? Well, David goes on to tell us, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Think about the story, the parable that Jesus told about those two men who went up to the temple to pray, a Pharisee and a tax collector. Whose sin was on the mind of the Pharisee? Not his. Not his. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of all that I get. But now think about the tax collector, whose sin was on his mind, his own, his very own. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And who went home justified? The Pharisee or the tax collector? It was the tax collector who went home justified. It was the tax collector who went home with those two little dots on his mind. We see those dots and we know why they're there, right? Because of our sins, because of my sins, because of your sins. Remember what I said earlier? There are a lot of things you notice when you sit in front of church that you don't notice that much when you sit in the back of church. We have been so comfortable, haven't we, sitting in the back of church, looking at those dots at a distance. Of course, you know I'm speaking metaphorically. It's time, my friends, to get off our rear ends, off the back pew, and come up in front of church and sit beneath those two dots. Why? Because you put them there. You put them there. Take a good look at them because you and I put them there. Look at them and repent. Look at them and weep bitterly like Peter did. In one of our Lenten hymns we sing, Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it makes me tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Those two little dots reveal our personal need for Jesus. But they do more than that. Those two little dots reveal the personal love of Jesus. When Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands. He was saying more than just, you know, look at my hands. Take a peek at my hands. He was saying so much more than that, that that word we translate as see in the Greek means so much more than just look at. It means to observe, notice, perceive, understand, to experience, and to visit. And I especially like the translation to experience. That to me really hits home. It was like Jesus was saying to Thomas, Thomas, put your finger here. Experience my wounds. Experience those two little dots. You know, so many people are told about the love of Jesus, but so few people experience it. So few believe that the love of Jesus is for them personally. They won't argue when you tell them that Jesus loves other people, but then they say, not me, not me. There's no way Jesus could ever love me. My dear friends, don't ever, don't ever be a not me when it comes to the love of Jesus. When Jesus showed Thomas his hands, he was not out for revenge. He didn't turn to Thomas and say, Thomas, look at my hands. Look at my hands. See what you did to me? It wasn't that way at all. This is the way it was. Thomas, look at my hands. Look at them. Do you see what I did for you? 
Do you see what I did for you, Thomas? My friends, what's the first thing Jesus said to these disciples when he came into that room? What's the first thing he said? Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. He wasn't looking for revenge. And then we are told Thomas said, or then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand, put it into my side, stop doubting and believe. And what was the response of Thomas? Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Thomas believed. He believed by faith. And he experienced through that faith the personal love of Jesus. My friends, Jesus Christ is not out for revenge. He's not out looking for payback for your sins. He knows, he knows everything you've ever done. He knows every thought you've ever had, every desire you ever had. He knows about your childhood lies. He knows about the sex. He knows about the abortion. He knows about the abuse. He knows about the drugs and the alcohol. He knows about the hate and the bitterness you carry around in your heart. He knows what you stole. He knows about the secret that you've been trying to keep a secret from others. And he's not out to pay you back because he's the one who paid for your sins. The Bible says the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. You know, when Jesus came to Thomas, Thomas didn't run away, did he? He didn't run away. When Jesus comes to you, my friends, do like Thomas did. Don't run away from him in shame and guilt and fear. He wants you to stay put so he can show you those two little dots and tell you how much he personally loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you and he has forgiven you. And forgiven of our sin and at peace with God, we can say what Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And I don't want you to miss that. I'm talking about the pronouns that, Peter, or that uh, Thomas used. My Lord and my God. Jesus is your Lord and he's mine. He's your Savior and he's mine. He's your God and he's mine. He loves you with a personal love. Those two little dots have your name on them. Jesus loves you with a love that will not let you go, a love that will pursue you down every road, through every valley, over every high mountain, a love that in this life will guide you, not in the paths of sin, but as Psalm 23 says, will guide you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. A love that will protect you from all harm and danger. A love that will guide you in life and hold you in death. And a love that will bring you into his eternal paradise with him in heaven. Those two little dots reveal some very big things. They reveal our need for Jesus. But also they reveal the personal love that he has for you and me. Sometimes... The smallest things in this world have the most profound influence on our lives. Thank Jesus for those two little dots. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Again, this week I'd like to encourage you in regard to your offerings, as your thank offerings that you give to your Lord, to give regularly and cheerfully to the work of the Lord here at Emmanuel. And remember, those offerings also are sent to our synod to carry on our work synod-wide. To God be the glory.
We'll continue our service with the prayer of the church, and that will lead into also then the Lord's Prayer and the closing prayer. We pray. Lord God, our Maker and Preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad, calm those who are distressed, and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Heavenly Father, in our prayers today, we lift up to you the family of Viola Klausnitzer, whom you have taken to be with you in heaven. Her body is now resting from her toil on this earth, awaiting the great day of resurrection. Her soul is there with you in heaven, enjoying the peace and joy that is hers forevermore by grace through faith in you. Lord Jesus, please comfort the family with the assurance of their salvation. Comfort them with the hope of the resurrection that your resurrection brings to all of us. And reassure us, Lord, that you will never leave us or ever forsake us. And now hear us, Lord, as we bring to you our own private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. And we pray the prayer you have taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll close our service with a thanksgiving hymn, hymn number 615. We thank you for your blessings. i
Thank you.